Welcome to January's Lico Challenge. Today's problem is longest palindromic substring. Given a string S, return the longest palindromic substring in S. Basically, we want to find a contiguous array inside of our string, and we want to return the longest length of a palindrome inside within the string. It could be the whole string itself. Okay, so the first approach might be to just go brute force and find every possible contiguous substring that we could calculate and just see check to see if it's a palindrome. <clears throat> if it is a palindrome and the length of it is longer than whatever we've stored before, then store that and return it at the very end. So to do that, how would we um, make sure something's a palindrome? Well, the easy way to do that is just to take a string, reverse it, and check to see if it's equal to one another, right? So let's start by creating a loop. We'll say for i in range of the length of s, and we'll have our second pointer if j in range of, uh, this would be i plus one to the length of s. Uh, we'd actually need a plus one here to get the very end. So what we'll do is store our candidate from s to i to j, and we'll check to see if this is a palindrome or not. So if candidate is equal to candidate um, reversed, you can use the reverse function or you can do it like this if you want using the step splice. And if this is the case, then uh, we want to make sure that the length of it is longer than what we've previously stored, right? So length of candidate is greater than the length of the max length that we're going to store somewhere as a temporary variable. So this would be max length, we'll make that zero. And we'll also store the output here, uh, just make that an empty string. So if all this is true, then say, okay, output, make that equal to the S of i to j, or I should just say candidate, and update our max length. Once that's finished, we can return our output. And this should work. C J in range. Name J is not defined. What? J in range of. Oh right, four J. <laughs> uh, let's see that. And okay, that looks like it's working. So let's go ahead and submit this. To be honest, I'm not entirely sure if this is going to pass or not. Um, now, time complexity-wise, this is a n to the third power. And why is that? Well, we have our nested for loop. That's going to make it n to the uh, n squared, n to the second power. But we also have this reverse uh, function going on, or checking the reverse palindrome. And this is actually going to be an, be an n uh, time complexity as well. So this ends up becoming n cubed, uh, which I guess is not fast enough. So can we do better? Uh, well, one way we could do that is instead of checking the entire length of the string to reverse it and see if it's palindrome, what if we started from the center and moved outward? Uh, if we did that and we checked every single n, uh, each time we move outward, we can still check, go as far as to point uh, as where it's going to be a, still a palindrome and then just return the maximum length of that. And each time we find out if it's longer, uh, than our max length, then we can store the left and right pointers that we return and return that as our output instead. Uh, so that's a bit of a mouthful, um, but as I code it out, it should start making more sense. Uh, we'll start by initializing the length of s here. And what I'm going to do is write a function. And this function is going to return to us the longest palindrome, if it exists, from the left and right with the left and right pointers. And what we'll enter is like somewhere to begin in the center. And um, I'll call it LP for our longest palindrome. And this is going to return to us a left and right. OK, so uh, to do that, we'll input, let's say, uh, let's make it L and R. All right, so what will we do? Um, while we got to make sure these pointers are within bounds. So while uh, R is, that's the right pointer. While that's less than, um, less than, yeah, less than n, and the left pointer is greater or equal to zero, we want to check to see here if um, these two characters are the same. So, if s of r uh, does not equal s of l, then we're just going to break here 
because um, it's not a palindrome. So whatever length this is right now, this is technically the longest palindrome we have. Otherwise, we're going to increase our right pointer to one and decrease our left pointer to one. And this is going to go as far as the string can go, um, whether it's going to right pointer goes out of bounds or the left pointer goes out of bounds. Once we finish that, we just return our LNR. So now we need to store some variables here. The start and end is going to indicate to us what the longest um, start and end pointers is for our longest palindrome. Uh, we need that, and that actually might be all we need because we can calculate the length by just subtracting start from end. So for i in range of n, what do we want to do? Well, we want to write, um, we want to call our function, right? So we'll have our l, we'll have another temporary l and r here, and we will pass in lp i and i. So whatever this length is here, if r minus l is greater than r n minus start. Then we want to update our end minus start, our end and start, right? So end is going to equal r, and start is going to equal l. Now, one thing to note, though, is if we had like a palindrome that looks something like a b b a, um, this wouldn't work because it would start the center each time. But what we need to do is check uh, when the left and right pointer is pointing like one next to each other, because depending on whether it's an even number of, of characters or an odd number of characters, uh, that could change what a how big the palindrome actually is. So to take care of that, I'll just have to call the function again here. And what we can do is instead of passing i i, we'll add, pass in i i plus one. Now once this is finished, we should have our max start and end for our for our longest palindrome, and we turn that as the l and r. So I think there is one thing I'm missing here. Um, uh oh, okay. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure I need to add a 1 to this L because that can go negative. Mm hmm. And let's see. Start end, start end. So I'll on my cell. So, uh. Oh, what am I doing? Of course, it's not on our start and end. Okay, so that was my bad. Uh, let's go ahead and submit this. Okay, so this gets accepted. Time complexity wise, it's n to the second power, n squared, and I don't think we use any extra memory, so it's constant space. Now there is one more algorithm, I believe it's called the manager's al algorithm, uh, that could actually solve this in O of n, but it's a very complex algorithm. One, I don't feel comfortable going into because I don't fully understand it. So I think this is good enough. And yeah, hopefully that helps. So thanks for watching my channel. And remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.